Well, it's because she wants something. Hello, my royal lovelies. Welcome back to the channel. Um, oh, my goodness. Woke up to more Megan news. Oh it, oh, it doesn't get any better, does it? Let's go through these murky waters. So, this one was quite interesting, actually. Uh, and we'll also get to the red dress and a few other royal stories, too. Because uh, I want there's something else to say about that red dress. Meghan Markle's Suits co-star reveals a surprising text he got out of the blue from the Duchess. Oh, I wonder, I wonder why it was so out of the blue. Let's, let's read on a little bit because I've pre-read this and um, it makes no surprise to me. So Meghan's former Suits co-star has revealed the sweet message. Meghan and sweet in the same sentence? Please. The Duchess sent to him as he embarked upon a new podcast... Aha! Uh -huh. New podcast. Megan getting in touch. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, my lovies? After previously admitting the pair had little contact after the show. Well, of course she wouldn't. She ditched everyone, didn't she? Uh, of course, we all know that when Megan, you know, moves on, she doesn't really take people with her from her past. She sort of... Isn't it a bit like pump and dump? She sort of pump and dumps a bit. She sort of <laughs> takes what she wants and then dumps. So Megan uh, and I am talking about Patrick J. Adam. It means nothing to me, my loves. I never watched Suits. I didn't watch it before Megan met Prince Harry, and I haven't watched it after. So I have no idea what he even looks like. Anyway, he played on-screen couple Michael Ross and Rachel Zane. Now, I do know that her character was Rachel Zane, of course. And their friendship appeared strong when he and his wife were invited to the Sussexes' 2018 royal wedding in Windsor. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Oh, if only I could have been a fly on the wall. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, but the act, I'd, I'd like to have been a fly hiding in, the, hiding in the royal toilets. Not so that I could have seen anything. I'm not perverted, my lovies so I could get the gossip, because that's where people often have a little gossip and they say what they think about everything that's going on. So I would love to have been a pair of ears in those royal toilets. But anyway, the actor, 43, admitted that he recently got a heartwarming note of support from the wife of Prince Harry, despite them losing touch in recent years. He said, she leads a very different life now, for obvious and important reasons. Important? Is there anything that Megan's doing at the moment that could be classed as important? Anyway, let's move on. Um, he said, while answering fans' questions on Reddit this week, he said, but, but upon hearing about the podcast, I got a lovely text saying how excited she was for us and asking how she could help in any way. Oh, well, we've got to the crux of the issue now, haven't we? So she's obviously heard that her friend, well, f former friend, previous acquaintance, has got a new podcast, i.e. he is now on the Ascendance. Well, hopefully he thinks that he's on the Ascendance. And Megan wants to ride another pair of coattails, doesn't she, my lovies? Her ears pricked up, her Montecito mansion... Monster ears suddenly pinged into action as soon as she sensed that there was someone that she could take advantage of. So there she is, years of silence, and then suddenly, as soon as he's got something that she wants, then she reaches out. How she could help in any way. Megan's Megan doesn't help anybody other than when it's when there's something in it for herself. Do you know what I mean? It's just absolutely ridiculous. He said, so lovely to still have that kind of support and friendship after so many years apart. Now, this is where these sorts of friendships are incredibly, I say friendships in inverted commas, are very toxic because he cannot clearly see what Megan is doing. Um, you know, <laughs> if, if that is the sort of friendship that is, you know, that kind of support is he talking about the kind of support where you don't speak for years and as soon as the friend friend wants something, they then get in touch with you? Is that the kind of support and friendship that you really want? I would question that. I would absolutely question what type of friendship that you value, my lovey, because it seems incredibly toxic to me. 
Um, so I, what is this? Is it called Sidebar is the podcast, I think. Um, it's dedicated to re-watching and breaking down. Oh, I don't know what it is. Anyway, he's got a podcast out and <laughs> I think Megan wants to be seen in the podcast world again because obviously uh, the Lemonada media thing hasn't come to any kind of fruition. Really, I think Lemonada has just kind of bought a package of the Archetypes podcast to redistribute it. They're hoping to get something from her, but I think it's going to fall foul. Um, so Megan wants to reinvigorate herself to sort of re-establish herself in the podcast world and being invited in as a guest or a co-host or something of that nature is the way that she feels that she can do that. So she's just using, she's just absolutely using, um, using people. And I just think it's just really, really, really disgusting. Um, so the other story that I kind of want to talk about, well, not really a story, it's more the fact that the whole red dress thing has had time to sink in. Megan at the children's gala. And I think a lot of people are now talking about that Megan was just basically there for the photographs. She was there for the photo. I did mention this in my previous video, but I just want to push it um, a little bit further, to be quite honest, um, because I've read the comments and I've read what people are saying. It did seem like Megan just turned up. I don't actually even know if she was properly invited. It looks like uh, and one person did comment in one of my videos of this, and I, I laughed out loud. They said it looked like she just heard about the gala, went scratching around in her wardrobe, pulled the red dress off the floor, that hence all the crinkles, uh, stuck it on. It wasn't really styled. She sort of put on a really bad Timu wig. <laughs> it does look like a really bad Timu wig, doesn't it? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, my loves. Uh, and sort of, you know, didn't really do makeup very well. Um, and a lot of people are talking about the ill-fittingness of the top half of that dress. I did mention it. Um, and people were laughing when I said about it being uh, as flat as a witch's tit and all the rest of it and two fried eggs. But no, honestly, seriously, I, I don't like to body shame anybody. But if you're going to turn up on a red carpet you know, you know that you are going to be looked at, photographed, talked about. So you take the necessary... It's not like me putting on a load of old clothes to go to the supermarket. No one's going to be taking photographs of me. I know that, therefore I don't have to make that level of effort. But if you're doing a red carpet, you know that people are going to be photographing everything that I've just said. So... Why would you re-wear something that now, obviously, you've lost probably more weight from when you previously wore it? it looks awful. Um, you know, <laughs> it just looks absolutely, absolutely dreadful. Just thought I'd mention that. So I also wanted to talk about Megan's red dress because Liz Jones, columnist for the Daily Mail, you may have read some of her pieces, has finally come out and said, I've always backed Megan, but the red dress pictures have led me to start to a startling realisation and I can no longer support her. I mean, wow, it's taken this long. I mean, I know sort of, you know, some people have disliked Megan or sort of had had the ick from her, had bad vibes from her right from the get-go. And for some people, it's taken a little bit longer to get there. I mean, people often ask me, why, you know, why my opinions changed. And I always answer, I always come back with, it's not me that's changed. It's it's Harry and Meghan that changed um, in terms of what their words, their actions and their deeds. It doesn't matter what they think and feel in private. Harry, we always know now, has had issues surrounding the media, had issues with being in the spare, um, had mental health issues with regards to the loss of his mother. We know that those issues have always been there, but they were not public. They were not sort of, you know, massively in the public domain. So, for me, the time when my opinions really changed about them was when they left and they then went to do Oprah because I thought it was dastardly the, what they were doing at the time when Prince Philip 
was effectively dying. He was in hospital, just about to come out to go home to die. And I thought that was disgusting. And then carrying on, doing everything that they've been doing, sort of bombarding the royal family uh, with hate from across the pond. Uh, Spare was like the final, final nail in the coffin. Um, But yeah, I arrived at that decision. After they left, I mean, I could even marginally forgive the way that they spectacularly flounced out um, if they would have then have just gone on and, you know, just lived their lives, quietly got on with things and actually, you know, just... I think it would have done them a lot better. What they could have done, instead of that stupid, pompous, you know, website list of demands that they put out when they first announced that they were leaving, what they could have actually done was just said, you know, look, we're finding it difficult. We've had a lot happen to us in a very short space of time, you know, getting together, the engagement, the marriage, having having a child, uh, the pressure of the media. We would like to take a, I don't know, a prolonged um, period of time to quietly reflect and get used to life. Uh, And we're going to do that in North America, but we still offer our support to the royal family, but we're going to step back from being a working royal. Please respect our wishes, blah, blah, blah. They could have said something like that, and then they could have just, I don't know, just done some private sort of, you know, business deals here and there, like other royals have, have done in the past. And they could have, I would imagine, have got sponsorships and all the rest of it. And they could have lived a relative private life. Instead, they did the complete opposite that just kind of set them up for their own failure. They set themselves up for their own failure. So my support has dwindled and dwindled and dwindled because of, you know, what they have done, their own actions, words, and deeds. But people are coming to that realisation at different speeds. Uh, and I'm glad that most people now, I think, are on the same page when it comes to Harry and Meghan. So very interesting that it took for a red dress to suddenly change Liz Jones's mind. And she said, I'm not going to read the whole article, uh, just a few things. So she said, I tried. I really did. I'd invested so much in our relationship. Years. Yes, I'd overlooked countless red flags. I'm loyal after all. She's a woman. Someone I saw as self-made, outspoken, a little broken, put upon, ridiculed and bullied by social and mainstream media. But now I cannot overlook that red dress. It was Megan's appearance on the red carpet at the Children's Hospital Gala in LA this weekend that finally caused the scales to fall from my eyes. Yes, I suddenly found myself cringing with second-hand embarrassment when I saw those pictures. And once you have that feeling, you can't go back. Previously, she'd heaped praise on Meghan's wedding dresses, all two of them. Oh, that's a bit of shade, isn't it? Uh, Applauded her love for dogs and animals. Uh, Well, I mean, she's good with Prince Harry, I suppose. (laughs) I digress. Uh, I adored her bravery in going... Bravery? in going up against a powerful dynasty. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Stop blowing smoke up Megan's backside. Um, Girl, we hear you. As a one-time aspiring Hollywood actress, you know the meaning of hard, thankless work. You are one of us. You speak out about things that are hard to take or even believe. Uh, Blah, blah, blah. But but, but at that charity gala, I realised that I was starting to ring, that that was starting to ring false. Uh, Megan, it's you, not me. I'm sorry to say, in that ill-fitting dress, you didn't look like a regal royal. You looked diminished. And that's when I realised what you are now and what you represent is so small. Megan has gone from duchess to D-list. She hasn't grown in stature over her years in the public eye. She has shrunk. Well, one part of her anatomy certainly shrunk, uh, the upper circumference area, uh, as though she'd been put through a hot wash. Only her eyebrows have grown. Well, maybe a nose as well, a few inches at least, or maybe a few feet. Uh, Compare the photo of Meghan uh, to what she wore in 2021. Right, I'm not going to read any more, but you get the the drift of it. Meghan did look diminished, and she did look D-list, and she did look deranged. All of the Ds. She certainly didn't have a pair of double Ds, let's put it that way. Um, So she did look diminished and, you know, it's, that's not what Megan, from Megan's point of view, 
wants. She doesn't want to look diminished. She wants to look like she's on the ascendance, hence why she's furiously grabbing any old friend that she possibly can, clinging onto them for dear life, trying to get on their podcasts, trying to be seen in the same kind of orbit. It's not working. She looks desperate. You actually just look at her now and you go, uh, you know, was that once the lady that married Prince Harry? that was, you know, performing royal duties on behalf of a nation, going on foreign royal official tours. Now, when she does this, when they go off on their fake faux tours, it just looks ridiculous. And now the penny is dropping for so many people, including Liz Jones. So I just want to know your thoughts and comments on that. Um... And I think for Meghan and Harry, it's only going to get worse. This divergent path route that they are embarking on is just not going to work for them. Because it just, it makes them seem even less royal. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, so definitely not um, anything that I think that they would want from their perspective. However, it is incredibly... Um, interesting to watch from a royal watcher's point of view how self-destructive that pair can actually be um, because it is just you know it's like it's like a lesson in how not to do these things um, you know if they are almost writing the book of the, a manual of how not to leave a massive royal institution or you know a big public institution and go it alone because what they have done is just totally not what anybody should be doing. Right, I did have some royal stories that I wanted to talk about as well, but I think I'm going to leave those until tomorrow because I've been yakking at you so much and then hopefully I won't have any Harry and Meghan stories to put in that video. So thank you for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, then please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media and of course do hit that bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. So from me to you all my lovies and goodbye.